All right, my name is Ebu Kawabucha, and yes, I'm wearing a onesie. I will be your moderator this evening. Um, just a quick, uh, ladies first, actually, from here, just introduce yourselves and what you do with you, Kemi. My name is Kemi Adetiba. Um, I started off as an honor personality. I don't know if anyone remembered when I was on the radio, television, um, but I think you guys might recognize me a little bit better now because I did two very, very, very small films like this. Very, very small. One was called Wedding Party. How many people watched that? <laughs> and the other was King of Boys. How many people watched that? <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for the box office numbers. Yeah. So I'm very happy to be here, you know, with my comrades. I'm pretty excited, especially because Ibuka and I have a deal going on that he's only going to ask me the easy questions. Yeah, so, but I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. My name is Chesson. I'm a music video director, or known as a music video director. Um, I, shoot, I shoot a lot of commercials as well and corporate documentaries. Um, people know me for the work I've done in Nigeria, but I've actually done a lot more work overseas. People know me for the work that I've done for the bands, Wizkid, Davido, and the likes, and other African artists. Um, I've been in the game for about 18 years, 18 years plus, um, and yeah, still going strong. So yeah. Good evening, everybody. My name is Banky Wellington. Uh, in terms of the things that I do, it's a, a lot of things. I am an artist, an actor, a director a businessman, an ad guy, most recently a politician, uh, a proud husband, uh, and uh, just a generally, uh, generally speaking, a media entrepreneur. And uh, I'm happy to share the stage with these brilliant minds. So let's just get into it. Thank you very much. Um, so this session is called um, Nigerian Filmmakers Inspiring a Nation. And I just want, starting from you and Banky, with Down This Way, uh, just complete this sentence for me. I'm a filmmaker because... I am... It, can I... Is no, like yeah, a, enjoy okay. yourself. <laughs> All right. I'm a filmmaker because I enjoy telling stories. Um, I enjoy telling stories that inspire, stories that touch, stories that change, stories that motivate, stories that entertain. Um, and so... You know, when, when, we, when we talk about filmmaking, actually my career, if you look back through my music videos, you'll see that I was always a storytelling type of music video guy. Like I'm not the, you know, throw a bunch of girls on a table to twerk, you know, music video. Nothing, not saying that there's no room for that. I was wondering what I <laughs> But um, even from my music videos, you can tell that I was kind of into the art of telling stories because I think that that's just a very powerful medium to communicate and to engage and to inspire people. And so luckily for me, my film career thus far, I've only really done three uh, full length films and the three of them are in the top 10, praise God, in the top 10 of Nigeria. Uh, Wedding Party 1, shout out to Kemi Adetiba, we did that. Uh, Wedding Party 2 and Up North. Um, and if you see, you know, with the Wedding Party story I think was very important in terms of what we achieved in telling the true story of what a Nigerian celebration is like. But Up North was just as important, if not more, to me personally because of the story. And, you know, on the surface, it was a comedy. I don't know how many people got to see it. Did you see, if you saw Up North, let me see your hands. So on the surface, it was, about a, it was a comedy about an NYC student. But hidden in that were messages about female girl child, I mean, girl child empowerment, education. Um, the girl child in the North, I think, is the most disadvantaged person in Nigeria, maybe even on the continent. And so that story, immediately I read the script, it jumped out at me as this is a movie that we have to make. We've got to tell this story about educating our children, especially the northern Nigerian girl child, about empowering them, about communities coming together. So that's what I enjoy. I enjoy using art to tell stories, and those stories hopefully will inspire or entertain or motivate or whatever, and hopefully make me some money while we're at it, because that's good too. Chesa? Um, I'm a filmmaker, videographer, because I love being creative. I'm a super creative person. Um, I'm different. Um, and honestly, I don't know anything else. It's all I've ever done. Um, people don't know too much about me because I'm quite a kind of quiet person. But I've actually, I actually studied uh, visual effects and, um, and animation. So my whole background has been in and around filmmaking. Um, and that is all I know. So 
that is why I'm in filmmaking. If I'm to do anything else, I don't know. I've never tried it, so I can't really say much. So that's all I know. I love it. I'm creative and I'm different. And that's what I always say to people. Anyone who's trying to get into this business, always be different. Don't be scared to do something different to what everyone else is doing. Don't just follow the trends. Don't worry about what people say to you. Don't worry about what, how it's going to turn out. Just go and make it. And then people follow if it's good. All right. Kemi? <laughs> Um, I think they've, they've, they've basically said it all. I'm a filmmaker because I enjoy telling stories. I'm a storyteller. Um, when I tell, I tell people all the time that when I was growing up, um, and we, we came from a highly creative family. Um, we were surrounded and slapped in the face with the arts, movies, music, and things like that. But I never once, when I was a kid, go... Went, I never went, oh my God, I can't wait till I'm a director. Do you understand what I mean? I, I, I mean, I, my favorite movie is The Sound of Music or Coming to America and all that. I mean, we, the, 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 the film, the movie and film culture was really big in my, my house. But then I don't think I ever, I, I couldn't um, equate the way I felt with this direction about being a director. And you also have to understand that, I mean, being able to sit here and we have all you guys in the in the crowd uh, trying to learn from us. This would not have happened like as recent as maybe five, ten years ago. Um, being in the creative space was for people that uh, maybe did well dropped out, fell off the, the, the wagon and things like that. When I started off on the radio, um, I didn't, I, I actually wouldn't tell people my last name. I'll just say signing in Kemi, Ke uh, Kemi you know, and I moved from there. Sorry. Oh, okay. So I moved from there, and of course, just like um, Chesson, I started doing music videos. But anyway, like, it, it, I think my entire journey has been um, a series of welcome mistakes. I know this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, I know I'm supposed to tell stories. I'm very, I'm very happy that I've been given this platform to be able to express myself. I don't think I could ever do anything else. Not throwing anything, I mean, nine to five is, has never been it's never been anything for me when, I mean, I have a first degree in law. And from the very moment while I was studying law, I was actually full-time also on the radio. And then if you see how I started off with music videos, if you see all my, my music videos, especially the earlier ones, they're all like mini films, right? Because that's just the only way I think. I see in pictures, I see in stories. And I'm so grateful to be able to be in this space where I, can, I have an outlet to be able to express myself. Someone else on this panel, on the stage now, has a law degree, but let's not go into that. <laughs> um, something you touched on there, Someone which I want to go... Someone has an engineering degree, so <laughs> let's if you want to compare... Oh, sure, well, well, whatever. <laughs> I want to I talk about, you know, I mean, we're trying to be brutally honest here. I mean, Nollywood, for the longest time, hasn't had the greatest reputation. Um, people watch. It has a huge following. It's the third largest movie industry in the world, sometimes the second. Um, but for the most part, people will tell you, like we've heard a lot of times, oh, and I can't watch it, not even movie in the cinema. I can't. Because people believe quality is not or was not always as great as, as it should be. Why would you go into an industry like that where the same not to be, quote unquote, greatness or respect? And um, I ask this because there's people who have aspirations to do certain kind of jobs who find it difficult to convince people around them that they would want to do that. So what was it that about you or the industry that made you go into it? What was it about the industry that... So, like I said, it wasn't a calculated move. I didn't say... Remember, I said I, 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 I had... It wasn't, there was never a space where I said I want to be a director. It just kind of happened. Now, I understand what you mean. It, it, we're coming from a space where Nollywood doesn't really have the respect that it deserves. Um, heck, there was a time where music was the exact same way. Yeah. But look at us now, isn't it? Um, I think what is important is that when we create these, and I will call it them what they, by God's grace, masterpieces, like the wedding parties and the up nords and the king of boys, we need to celebrate those things. Because guess what? We're com there's a whole generation coming in right now that they now know that they have more options, uh, uh, occupational options, than being a lawyer, a doctor, or an engineer. There are people that are actually having the goal to be able to go to their parents and go, I want to be an artist. That's because of people like Banky W. Do you understand what I mean? Um, I want to be uh, a, a director. That's because of people like 
Shesso, and by God's grace, hopefully people like me as well. And then that's why in everything that I'm doing, I'm very conscious that I, I am representing someone. I'm representing people. One of the, 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 the things I say all the time is, by God's grace, I'm successful, but then I know that it's not, God hasn't made it happen um, uh, how do I put it? It's not for me to be able to carry my shoulders and walk around. It's because a little girl can see me and point at me and go, oh, wow, I've seen everything that she's achieved, and I can see the journey of how she got there. And the only weapon that she had to get to this particular space is hard work. Yeah. So I always want to celebrate that. So like going back to what you're saying, yes, definitely. Hollywood didn't start off the way it was, you know, uh, uh, yesterday. Hollywood has taken over 100 years to get to exactly where it is. Why are we the ones that don't want to give ourselves a break? Yeah. And can we be honest that Nollywood is not the same Nollywood that was there 10 years ago, right? Yeah. It's an, exactly, it's an evolution. But for you to get there, you have to start there. But going back again, we need to start celebrating successes of people like us. Do you understand the Chassons? I mean, I, 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 this is the first time I ever met Chasson, but his work, no. pre I swear to you. And you know the weird thing about it? <laughs> what is so weird is um, um, we're almost family, <laughs> you know, but I, that's the first time I, but his work, I, I knew his name. I knew about his work before I ever met him. I saw the things that he's done with DeVito, not just DeVito, like uh, uh, a big American artist, that is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. And I'm praying myself as well. Essentially, when I travel and people are watching King of Boys and things like that, and you have Oyibos coming and surrounding me, you know, and telling you this is a film that was shot. 90% 90, 90 of the film is not even in English. And they're breaking it down for you. And they're saying, a lady actually got up in Los Angeles and said to me, this film should have been the one that won the Oscar for Best Foreign Film. And yes, you can clap for that. So it's King every of Boys time too, too. King of Boys coming. <laughs> but then we also have, um, there's, there's an obligation also to ourselves. So every time we have the opportunity to step forward, we always have to put our best foot forward. You understand? Every time you have the opportunity, the platform to show off your goods or your services, it is, you have to knock it out the park. Yeah. That's my long-winded winded answer. <laughs> <laughs> Shazon, why, why, why are you not interested in Nollywood? Is there a reason why? Is it a respect issue as well? Man, I'm very busy, man. Like, honestly... I, He's making I've, checks. I've, 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 do you know what? Honestly, very busy guy. I am interested. I, a lot of people don't know too much about me, which is cool, because I don't put myself out there like that. But um, a while ago, say about 10 years ago, when I shot One Day Call... I'll tell you a story. When I shot One Day Call Bumper to Bumper, that's a long time ago, I was approached... Yeah, yeah, I was approached by... Um, Funke Akindele, Jennifer, to shoot Jennifer 1 and 2. The scripts actually are still with me now. And I had no interest. I mean, for me, it wasn't like a disrespect thing. I was just very much into commercials and music videos at the time, because that's what I knew. I actually didn't have any clue about what Nollywood was. And when I came into the music video industry in Nigeria in 2008, 2007, I was already doing videos in the UK. I think um, Tokyo James spoke about Channel U and those stations in the UK. I was part of that fabric. I helped start Channel U. People don't know that. I shot all those Where Do We Come From, North Wheezy, and all those kind of songs in the UK. That was us back then when we didn't know what we were doing. They had like a little PD-150. And so that was all I knew. So I came to Nigeria, met the band, and did um, Suddenly, that video Suddenly. Um, and from there, it just took off. So Nollywood, for me, when I looked at it, I realized that the music video industry then was moving way faster than Nollywood. Like, way faster. What we've achieved in the past eight to 10 years, Whew. Like what you were saying about Hollywood being around for 100 years and we've just, really and truly, we are moving faster than Hollywood. Uh, than Hollywood. 10 years that we've kind of achieved what we've achieved, Hollywood didn't do that in 10 years. They really didn't do that in 10 years. And what I'm thinking is what's happening for the next 10 years in the music, I, I'm going to be obsolete. I know because there's, honestly, because there's so many young creative boys that I respect and I think are super dope and, and women, sorry, <laughs> inclusive, right, are super dope that when I look at their work, I'm like, okay, cool. I need to actually take a back seat and actually mentor these kids so that they don't make the mistakes I made. And they can actually progress faster. And that's not just in Nigeria. I'm talking about Africa as a whole. So, yeah. 
So, uh, Banky, coming from the question I asked him now, you have done, made the transition. I mean, you were not necessarily a music director, but you always sort of had creative uh, control of your videos. Um, you've transitioned sort of to Nollywood. Um, how easy was that? Why did you do that? And what's the goal? Yeah. Um, how easy was that? Why did I do that? And what's the goal? Okay. Um, how easy was it? To be honest with you, over the years, I got approached by quite a few different uh, production companies who wanted to do film and knew that I had had an interest in film. But I just didn't quite find the right kind of project that I wanted to attach myself to. Um, so I lucked out with Wedding Party, and I owe that to Kemi Adetiba because when they were creating the script, I think Kemi was the one person in the room that was like, Chebi, you are auditioning people. Audition Banky W too. And you know, some people felt like, oh, you know, he's a musician, he can't do it. And I think she fought for my right to audition. And that's really what gave me that entrance into film. So big up script. Thank you, Kemi. Um, I take checks, I take checks. <laughs> And so, uh, you know, so that being my first step, it was a great first step, you know. So I, I really, I mean, I can't, um, I would say it's probably easier for me than for many other people that are trying to break into the business because I was afforded with that blessing of an opportunity. Um, why did I do it? Um, a few different reasons. Number one, it was always my goal to, you know, there's a reason, you know, people know the company name is EME. Shout out to Tunde. Where's Tunde? Okay, the company name, the company, shout out to Captain, Captain Demure is right here. Um, so, Captain and I, quick short story, Captain and I have been best friends since we were 13 years old. I'm 38 now, that's what? Quick math. Long time. God bless you. Um, but, so we've been best friends since we were 13, and, you know, we, as God would have it, we both ended up in New York to go to university, and at that time, you know, we started dreaming, you know, very big. The things that you're talking about at 13, 14, you know, being in music and movies and all of that. And so when we were in, in New York, you know, we had the conversation about, you know, me getting into music. But for us, that was always just a door. It was always just a platform. You know, at the end of the day, if all you do is take the talent that God gave you and use it for that purpose alone and go home, then that's failure. Because you have done nothing more than what you've been given. I think that the requirement on us is to grow because you're either growing or you're dying. So if you're not, you know, as you're getting to some goalpost, you shift the goalpost some more. As you're getting to the next goal, you shift the goalpost because that's the challenge. That's the requirement, you know. And so for us, we called it EME because we wanted to build an empire. So we called it Empire Mates Entertainment. So the goal was always to use the music set it up, set up the record label, help other people become successful with music, then branch out into movies, branch out into advertising, branch out into media, branch out into whatever else we could get our hands on. So this was always the plan. The plan was always to grow. The plan was always to expand. And what was the last thing? <laughs> I think the goal eventually? The goal, the goal eventually, um, you know, the goal eventually for me, I, I can really say is impact. I think that that's what drives me. It's about impact. It's about, you know, we never know, you know, by God's grace, we will all live long to see our children's children. Amen? Amen. But, you know, the truth is, you never know when, you, when your time is going to be up. And, and we share an experience with that, with Tosin Buckner, rest in peace. You know, that was an incredible, incredible young lady. And none of us knew that she was going to be gone when she did. But we can honestly say that she lived the best life possible with her time here. She, she affected us on radio. She affected us with her writing. She affected us with her friendship and her personality. And for me, that's what it's about. It's about impact. So if I'm doing music, am I impacting Nigeria and the world with my music? Am I impacting upcoming artists with my music? If I'm doing movies, if I'm doing politics, if I'm doing uh, philanthropy, if I'm doing charity work, if I'm in business, Am I using that to impact the world around me? Because at the end of the day, that's what I want my story to be. When I'm done, let them say that this guy, while he was here, he tried. He tried. He did a good job. And that's what drives me. All right. I've been told um, that I have five minutes, but I will not take it. It's not possible. But I'm going to just ask one last question before I take questions from the audience. It's, just, it's going to go to all of you. I'll start with you, Chasson. Um, why, why are you so good at what you do? 
and this is um, for people who want to. Be, I mean, you, you you've done videos for some of the greatest art artists on the continent and outside of the continent. You've been in three movies that are in the top ten ever in Nigeria. You have two record-breaking movies, Kemi. So obviously, you guys are excellent at what you do. So what is it about you that makes you so good at what you do? Um, that's a hard question. Um, honestly, I'm just, I'm stubborn. That's the thing. I'm very stubborn. I'm very, I mean, in my field, you have to be stubborn because if you take everyone's kind of input, you just literally have a mishmash. I'm like my, sh I'm a chef and I like to create my product my own way, right? So whatever I do, I have to be very kind of strong-willed and kind of narrow-minded to be able to achieve my goal. When I first started, I used to read all the comments on social media about, oh, his video's rubbish and that. And that stuff, if you let yourself listen and read all that kind of stuff, it gets to you, right? And then you start making videos or making your content to please people. Nah, that, that's not the way it should be done. You need to do something that's different. You need to stand out. And that's the impact that I know I've made in the industry. So I've never been scared to do things my way. And people now associate, I mean, when you see my videos, hopefully you know, oh, he shot that, I'm sure someone shot that video, right? So for me, me being good at what I do, I mean, some people think I'm rubbish at what I do. So honestly, I don't look at it like that. I just hope that my next project is better than my last. That's all it is. And, um, and that's what I strive to do. That's it. Thank you. Why am I so good at what I do? Well, first of, first of all, I don't know if I would say that. Um, the numbers don't lie, but go on. <laughs> um, I would say probably three things, three reasons why I'm able, or, or why I've come this far. Um, number one, unquestionably, is the grace of God. Um, I believe that everything that I am today, every success, every right decision or step that I've taken has been because of the grace of God. And that's just my personal belief. Number two, um, so I believe in God. Number two, I believe in myself. Um, I think that, you know, we hear people say that a lot. And, and it's hard to do, honestly. Um, but I think that you need that. You need that stubbornness. You need that grit, that determination that this thing that I believe that I can do or this thing that I want to achieve, I will do it. And you just, you know, and, and, and step three really is once you believe in yourself, you just never give up on yourself. You never give up on your dreams. You never take no for an answer. And you just never stop. If you fall down, see, in the journey of life, I, I've said this many times, falling down is inevitable. But getting back up is completely optional. So you will fall. You will make mistakes. You won't get it right every time. But if you keep going, eventually the journey ends up being worth it. And that's what's been true for me. That's funny because I fell yesterday when we were playing. You <laughs> fell on the basketball court, but you got back up. And I made a few baskets after that. <laughs> yes, so you did. You need to know that. <laughs> Kemi? <laughs> oh, so that's a really difficult question for me. Um, I was trying to borrow and steal <laughs> from you guys. Um, first is, and it might sound cliche, but the first thing, uh, the most pivotal definitely is the grace of God. And I'm not just saying that to say that, because if I sit down and tell you my journey, if I sit down and tell you the story of how I got to this very moment, well, you, you'd, you'd understand what I mean by that. Um, the second one is, I believe I have something, but I don't necessarily wake up in the morning thinking, oh my God, I am fantastic at what I do. I'm actually afraid, I wake up afraid every day that this is going to be taken away from me. Yes, that's the truth. I remember, um, a couple years ago, a few years ago, um, when I shot the Olamide video, this was like four, five, year, five years ago, five, six years ago, I shot Olamide's video. There were two videos. I remember I'd submitted it to his PA while they, he actually came and met me at the airport, submitted it to him, got on the plane to go to New York. By the time I got down in New York, I put on my phone and it's just like boom, 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 boom. Everybody's sending me messages. Apparently he released the two videos at the same time. And everyone is going, oh my God, this is amazing. Oh my God. And then it was like, I was the, the, the I mean, you could have thought that, you know, gold <laughs> comes out of my, 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 my behind. And you know the weird thing about it, another person will stick their, their chest out and be like, God damn, I'm good. I am MF Kemia Deitiba. I was petrified. I actually almost went into depression. And then the person I called during those times is my father. And I'm like, everyone is talking about these videos. I need them to stop talking about the videos. 
And I do that all the time. My dad, it's like, I, you know what I was telling him? I said, I'm afraid they're going to find out I'm a fraud. <laughs> like, I literally walk around every time feeling that eventually people are going to find out I'm a fraud and I'm not really that good at what I do. And my dad said something to me. He said, you know what? You say this thing all the time, and you're going to have to shut up. Like, this is not the first time you've done it. This is not the second time you've done it. This is not the third time you've done it. You've consistently shown, and you've done it over and over again. So guess what? You must have something. So I rely on that. I must have something. But I also know I have to be intentional with using it. And I, one of the things that I know for a, very, for, for a fact is the reason why people say I'm good at what I do is I'm not afraid of hard work. I will go harder than the next person. I am hungry. I keep myself in a space where I'm constantly hungry. When I see these guys do amazing things, I'm not jealous. It pushes me even more to do, to, uh, uh, to do amazing stuff. I was just talking to somebody, I'm going to round up, but I was just talking to somebody the other day, and I said, when King of Boys came out and everybody was talking about it and everybody was talking about it and then everybody felt like we did something, we made a mark. But look at all the amazing films that are coming out now. Everybody thought that uh, um, Nigerian movies, for you to have a, a, a successful Nigerian movie, it had to be a comedy film. We did King of Boys. We proved that wrong. But look at all the amazing films that are breaking out from comedy films. Another person could feel intimidated. I definitely feel there's a fire on my ass. So what is that going to do for me? It's going to make me work harder. I constantly feel like I'm juggling balls in the air, and if I take my, my face away from like this or like this, everything is going to come crashing to the ground. So I am not afraid of hard work. I know I should be grateful being where I am at the moment, you know, and every time, and I say this when I, when, uh, uh, anytime I have an opportunity to speak, every time I have the opportunity to showcase my craft, the only thing that I'm thinking about is knocking out the park. I want to be the best at what I do. One of the, the this is not the last, last one, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing like what Banky said earlier on about leaving a legacy. One of my greatest dreams is that when my great-grandchild is in class, and the teacher walks into the class and he says, you know, when they walk into the class and they write the topic on the board, so everybody's like, get, get out your books, get out your pens, you know, I'm going to write the, today's topic on the wall, uh, sorry, on the blackboard, and then they write on the board and they write my name. And then they're going, they want to tell them about the impact I made in the world. I want to leave a legacy. And it's not for now, it's not for red carpets, it's not for, I want it that when people call my name, they, I want them to shake me with two hands. Not because of what I look like, but because of the work I've done. And that will live for generations and generations and generations by God's grace. How do you know you, it's, the thing is about to, you're, you're about to work on is it, or it's the one. What happens in your creative process? And then secondly, yeah, and then I guess both of you take that, then you take the question about, you know, getting into the industry and breaking in, so... How do you know? The first question, how do you know you've, you've hit it like when you're working um, on something? Honestly, you never know you've hit it. I'll be, I'll be really honest. Um, if you know you've hit it, then you probably haven't even hit it. I'll be, I'll be, I'm telling you the honest truth. The stuff that I've done, that I've won awards for, honestly, I didn't ever expect it. It will be the one, right? The videos that I like that I've done aren't the ones that everyone's singing the praises of, you know? So really and truly... I won't say it's luck, but you just have to just persevere. You have to actually create content that you believe in. That's all it is. Once you believe in it, and you believe in it more than everyone else, because a lot of people are going to tell you it's rubbish, right? Once you believe in it more than... Oh, seriously, then you've got to hit. Because that energy then flows out of you and into your project and then outwards, even into your client. So a lot of my clients that I've worked with... Um, Sometimes they don't even, half of them don't understand the concept to even start with. Half of them don't even care about the concept. They know my name, they see my face, they believe I'm going to deliver. And I'm looking at them like, you think I'm going to deliver? <laughs> even I don't know I'm going to deliver. <laughs> so um, really and truly, you have to be very confident, overconfident sometimes within yourself. And at the same time, just believe, 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 and be super creative. And that's it. Kemi? Um, 
I, I, I also want to touch about what, on what the other uh, gentleman had said. Um, how do you know that it's it? I don't think I ever wake up knowing that, that it's it, but I wake up knowing that this thing I must do. So it's something in my gut that I have to birth. Um, that is why I never touch anything I do not believe in. Whether it's a film, you can give me a billion dollars. If I don't feel it in my gut, eh, that God said I should do this thing. You I would literally never do anything just for money? I, no. And I've, I've actually said no to a lot of money before. But not a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me put it this way. Let me, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Let me, re let me rephrase for you. Let me put it this way. I did Wedding Party 1. The success of Wedding Party 1 afforded me to be able to do King of Boys. If I came tomorrow and I said I wanted to do King of Boys 2 and I needed a billion dollars, won't you give it to me? Yes. Yes. Because I'm tried and tested. Tell them. I'm tried and tested. I've shown that once you, that you can trust me with it, I would, yes, you would. Don't worry, there are already people wanting... I know the phone call I had today. Don't worry Jay, about it. Tell them. <laughs> Rage. <laughs> you know, so, so, so if I don't feel it in my gut, so I get... To, so King of Boys... Even wedding party, I knew that it was going to do well. I didn't know it was going to do that well. King of boys, I knew that I was supposed to do it. And by God's grace, anything I thought would turn to gold. But I, once you now have it and you have to release it to the world, being a creative is the, is the scariest place to be because we have public report card. Every other person, you, you, you know, you keep it in your, in your office and things like that. We now release it to the whole world and people, invisible people behind their computer can just say, rubbish. Stupid <laughs> nonsense. You understand what I mean? So at that point, I just know, I said, look, I've done everything I can do to get to this uh, 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 point, and I leave it to the universe. I leave it to God. Do you understand what I mean? So you never really truly know it's it. I just believe that I will do it. I'm, I'm going to birth it. I'm going to work so hard to be able to see it to fruition. Now, the other gentleman that was talking about acting and, and, and getting the attention of producers, no one owes you anything. You know, we, I get this question all the time. No one owes you anything. And that's the wow. thing about it. Really, honestly, no one owes you anything. And it's the fastest thing that you're going to have to learn. Before Banky was Banky, he probably was in a, in a, in a space of frustration as well. Before Adesua, before you, you learned Adesua's name, she also probably was struggling for roles at some point. Do you understand? But at some point, I tell people all the time, your chance is going to come. It might not always be convenient. It's now up to you that when you now have that opportunity, what did I say? You knock it out the park. That one is going to afford you to go to the next one. And you're in such, you're in, in such a better space. Because unlike before where you needed this huge platform on being on TV, film, now you have the most beautiful thing. You have a phone. People shoot entire movies on phone. I tell people all the time, you create your own resume. You create your own CV. So you, you want to be an actor, right? Good. Look for somebody else that wants to be a director, but nobody else is giving him the opportunity. Look for somebody else that wants to be a makeup artist, but nobody's giving the opportunity. Look for this other person. You all come together like Voltron. Shoot an amazing, another scriptwriter that nobody's giving them an opportunity. Come together like Voltron. Create an, an, a, a, some amazing short film. Put it on the internet. And then, and that's all you can, put it on and then see. So tomorrow now when they say, what have you done? Ah, look at this film. It's simple like that. You're actually in a much better space. But one of the things I need you to understand that no one owes you anything. No one owes me anything. No one owes me anything. I'm going to have to take it. I'm dropping so, my mic. So to just, to just piggyback, um, to just piggyback on the top of what both of them have said and especially what Kemi ended with, um, I think I may have misled you when I said my entry into the movie making business was easy. Because while that step of the journey was easy, there was an entire journey before that. And I think Toke mentioned it earlier. You don't know how many years somebody is walking. You don't know the story behind the glory, how long it took somebody, blood, sweat, tears. Ladies and gentlemen, I meet people that want to break into the music business all the time. Do you know how I broke into the music business? Me and this guy and one other friend would enter our car, our raggedy beat down car. First of all, we would print posters in my school lab, put it on the side of this car, and drive to every hair salon, every nail salon, everywhere that there were women 
in the city. We would go there and beg the owner that, please, we're young entrepreneurs. We want to sing for the customers. Sometimes they would throw us out. Sometimes they would let me sing. And I would sing two minutes of a song, and we would sell our CDs out of the trunk of a car. That's the beginning of EME. That's where EME started from. Now, if you're not willing to pay the dues and to endure rejection, if you don't have thick skin, if you, it's like what Kemi said, nobody owes you anything. You need to dogged determination that I am meant to do this thing. And guess what? Most people don't realize it. The difference between those who become successful and great and those who let their dreams die sometimes is just the ones that hold on the longest. It's just the ones that say, you know what? It didn't work today. I will try again tomorrow. That's, that's sometimes it's just that determination to say, I am not going to stop this thing until it happens. And so while... That final step into wedding party one was easy. Guy, we used to go to church to pack rice because we, didn't, we, we, we were working on our music. We couldn't afford to buy groceries some weeks and the CDs didn't sell. So we would go to his church, one branch of his church. They used to sell food after church. We would pack rice for the week. We used to do all of that. Listen, guy, everybody that you see that is successful, most times they've gone through the exact same challenges that you are. They didn't, nothing was handed to them. But they just had that determination that, you know what, until this thing happens, I'm not going to stop. And that, most times, is the, the difference between success and the people who let their dreams die. So just don't give up on yourself. So I just want to touch on what Banky was saying. Sorry. Let's yeah, go, yeah. let's go. No, no, no. No, because I think Banky is brushing over this whole thing about him acting and you, you, you think it was so easy. Yes, I did say Banky should audition for the role. And they said, oh, it's because he's his friend. This is Banky, but this time he had already sold records or up and down the place. Banky W, you can't even walk in, in an airport without people bomb rushing him. But still, they did not believe that he could, do, he could act. Because guess what? They've seen him and he's proven himself as an actor, sorry, as a musician, but he has not done anything as an actor. So do you know what I said to them? You're calling people to audition. I'm not asking you to give any special favors. Let Banky come. Let Banky audition. And I'm telling you this right, and I promise on everything. When Banky came, there were seasoned actors that came in. Everybody did amazingly well. Banky was par with another actor that had been in the game for so many years. Both of them. The only thing that broke, that we leaned um, into uh, uh, on Banky's side was because he had a mass following. Banky killed the audition. So when he finished, I just sat down there. I was like, eh, so you, what are you people saying again? <laughs> he proved himself. I started off on the radio. I started off on TV. When I was doing, when I started off, when I, 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 um, I went back to film school to become a director, nobody wanted to give me a job because I'd proven myself as a personality, but then as a director, and especially as a woman at that time, of course not. I now said, I will get one opportunity and that's the last opportunity. That's the last time I'm going to beg for a job. That was when Banky and I did Price to Die For. He and I were, oh, look, let me tell you something here. The story is deep. No one owes you something. You're going to have to take it. You're always going to have an opportunity. It's always going to come. But then be careful that when it comes, oh, don't give it excuses. Finito. Are you sure, are you sure you're done now? <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Please, your hands together for these amazing panelists. As we do that, please remember they're going to pose for our celebrity picture.